we want you to know that you are source energy beings, extensions of source energy, but source energy beings yourself, you are source energy. And you've come with powerful intention to sift through life and to let it produce within you ideas of improvement and more. And when that happens, even if you're in a bad mood, you emanate a request that your inner being hears and responds to. So there's a very important thing that we want you to understand right here and now. And we're going to talk about it until we can feel you clicking in and getting it. Because this is key to everything deliberate that you will do for the rest of your life experience. The law of attraction is responding to you. We just want you to understand who you are. What we mean when we say you. And what we mean when we say you is not just this magnificent body that you have claimed as you're sitting here in this room. It's the you that you were before you came into this body that still exists as non-physical energy. So there's this inner being you and there's this physical you and both yous have powerful points of attraction. The law of attraction is responding to both aspects of you. So when physical you squirms and writhes and has a bad moment and asks for an improvement, non-physical you becomes the improvement and the law of attraction begins responding to that improvement. When you ask, it is given. Someone should write a book. <laughs> when you ask, it is given. It's given, it's given, and it's received by that non-physical part of you. The question is, are you in sync with the non-physical part of you? And the answer is, sometimes, but not usually. Could be a lot more. Are you in sync with your inner being? How would I know if I am? I feel great. I feel eager. I feel love. I feel sure. I feel well-being. I feel clarity. I feel eagerness. But if I'm not in sync while I'm in my human form, then I feel irritation. I feel some distress. I feel annoyance. I feel blame or guilt or fear or hatred or something like that. So you have two points of attraction potentially. We're wanting you to make it into one. We're wanting you to move yourself deliberately into vibrational sync or alignment or allowing with your inner being so that you can experience the benefit of that point of attraction. And we want so much for you to understand that one who's connected to this energy, to the momentum of this energy, your inner being has offered no resistance that could be acknowledged by you for as long as you've been in this physical body. That's a huge amount of momentum, of gathering of cooperative components on your behalf. And it takes so little cooperation of you in your physical form to merge with that and then be in that powerful place of attraction. Who? Oh. The awesome power of non-resistant thought. That's what we're talking about. That's where your inner being is all the time. But when your inner being is standing in that awesome place of non-resistant thought and calling to you because you said you wanted it, all those things that you're asking for and you're standing in discord with that, it makes you scream to the boundaries of the universe. Not fair, unjust. Why is that happening to me? Why am I not getting what I've been asking for? Because you keep doing that. Because you keep noticing what is already manifested instead of feeling the vibration of what's underway. Instead of knowing what your inner being knows about what you've asked for, you're taking score of the manifestation. So what we're talking about here is we want you to get out ahead of that, get out ahead of that by letting yourself feel the way your inner being feels about where you stand in relationship to that. We would like so much if you could get a sense in your mind of the coming together of the things that matter to you. And you would feel an appreciation and a certainness and a sureness and a I'm being seen and I am loved and I'm being tended to and all is well. Because if you can accomplish those feelings, then you join vibration with your inner being. And you get to experience the moment by moment, conscious, aware, unfolding of 
these vibrations turn into thoughts and ideas and these thoughts and ideas turning to actions and impulses and these actions and impulses turning to the manifestation of each and everything that you've asked for there is nothing that you cannot be or do or have everything that you've ever wanted no matter how good you are at articulating it has come together has already culminated but our knowing of what is and your knowing of what is are two different knowings because we know the isness of the vibrational unfolding and you don't want to count it until it's parked in your garage you don't want to count it until the money's in the bank you want it you want the manifestation of it you got to get over that and it makes you worry when we say you got to get over needing the manifestation in order to feel good because you think we're just trying to teach you to feel good so that you'll just settle for what is oh yeah Abraham just wants us to feel good anyway oh, we just want you to feel good and we know what that leads to because we understand the process of the way things unfold hello thank you my question is how do I really know there's so much I mean there's so much beautiful things to know do be have how do I know what to know next what's the best way to know what's best to know next well knowing first of all that's a direct contradiction to your opening statement to us get out <laughs> you no problem <laughs> There's a pool on the sixth floor. <laughs> I brought my bathing suit. <laughs> it's a good place to be. The reason we're playing with you a little bit is because there are times to focus on what you want and there are times to relax and allow what you've focused upon before to come into your experience. And this is why we are making this important distinction. And it's at the root of your question so the answer will make a lot of sense to you once we tell you this very short thing as you pointed out there are so many options of wonderful things that you could be the creator of unlimited and we can understand how when you look at it conceptually that it could feel overwhelming however you don't have access to all of those things nor would you want to anyway so let's say that your life has helped you to focus on something maybe it's money maybe it's a vehicle maybe it's a relationship maybe it's an improvement in something doesn't matter what the subject is but the subject every subject is the subject of what is wanted and the subject of the absence of it there's a range between having it and not having it that you could be in vibrational alignment with you might feel sort of prosperous but you might worry about money too so you're sort of back and forth on that subject so in any moment in time when you focus on something we like to call your attention to it by saying you've picked up the stick of that subject and on one end of it is what you want and on the other end of it is the absence of what you want and the question is what's your emotional state of being what's your vibrational point of attraction when you've picked the stick up because when you pick the stick up when you're focused upon it that's your point of attraction so let's say it's about money just for fun because that's often something that people are wanting and worrying about so let's say you've picked up the stick called money and you're pondering it but you're under the influence of something that just happened which is bills came that you can't pay or someone close to you wants something from you financially that you can't afford and so what's activated within you is a clear feeling of lack of money and the way you are feeling right now is worried or pensive or even angry or guilty or blameful or resentful in other words you've got some of these emotions that are within you now that you've got the stick in your hand under those conditions what we were talking about earlier you're blowing a vibrational resistant pattern outward and even though your vortex has been gathering the cooperative components they can't get to you because your output is whatever you're under the influence of so the answer such an important answer to deliberate creation is be aware of whether you're under the influence of your problem or whether you're under the influence of your solution you can't be needing something and letting it in at the same time that does not go together Esther had another remarkable experience just the other day she's having so much insight as she's getting a handle on this 
concept of what influence am I under and how do I feel? What's my point of allowing? What's my state of allowing right here and now? So someone she cares about was not appreciating her. She wanted to be appreciated by this person and this person wasn't appreciating her. And Esther really felt like she deserved to be appreciated by this person, but this person wasn't appreciating her. And she was with this person for a very short period of time and this person wasn't appreciating her. And as Esther walked away, Esther thought, I'm not appreciated by this person and I should be being appreciated by this person. And she knows that that'll get her nowhere that she wants to be, but she was too busy, had too much to do. Off she went, and left it right there. Well, the very next day, another person was offering just this willing, helpful, not asked for by Esther, helpfulness. And Esther felt so appreciated. She felt so appreciated. Not big things, but she just felt so appreciated. And she'd completely forgotten that moment in time when she wasn't feeling appreciated because she was sort of living conditionally. And if the condition made her feel unappreciated, then she felt unappreciated. But when the condition caused her to feel appreciated, she felt appreciated. You get what we're talking about. Not a healthy way to live, but almost everyone does it. And in the middle of that, she received a message from this other person flowing appreciation toward Esther. And Esther had just had that airport experience where she had witnessed a woman screaming for acknowledgement of her value while no one wanted near her because of the forcefulness of her discord. And Esther's putting this all together and she's thinking, well, if I'm spewing, I'm not being appreciated from this particular person. Even if that person wanted to appreciate me, that person couldn't appreciate me. You create your own reality. It's so easy to think that this other person should be appreciating you, no matter what you're doing. And they very, very well may be, but you can't let it in. So you look confused, are you? It's attraction, 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 attraction. Esther wasn't letting appreciation in. And she had good reason not to because she didn't feel that she was seeing any evidence of it. But just the same, Esther wasn't letting appreciation in until she got focused in a way where she did let some appreciation in. And then once she got the pump primed and was letting some appreciation in, then she started being appreciated by the person who wasn't appreciating her before. Doesn't that make a little bit of sense to you? This is what we want you to hear. Feels off the subject, but it isn't. What you're getting isn't about anybody else but you, even though it feels like it's about that person who didn't appreciate me and that person who did. No, it's about that moment in time when I wasn't letting it in and this moment in time when I am letting it in. And here's the thing. Now you're starting to hear us a little bit, yes? Here's the thing. You can't let what others are doing be your reason for not feeling appreciated or feeling appreciated. You can't be conditional in it. You've got to get out ahead of it. Because if you're having a knee-jerk reaction to what is, then more of the same of what is is what's going to come to you because you're not going to let anything other than the knee-jerk reaction to what is in. Does that make sense to you? Whatever it is that you're feeling is the indicator of the wall that you've got up or the openness that you have. If you're feeling wonderful, then you're open and more wonderful on all subjects is being allowed in to you. But if you're feeling disenfranchised or disadvantaged or not respected or, or taken advantage of in some way, then that's your vibrational output and that's affecting everything else that you let in. And none of this has anything to do with the others who are out there interacting with you. It's all you. Now Esther might say, oh, that doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem like it's all me because I was reacting to other things. We say, therein lies your problem. Letting others control what you're letting in by your isolated moment in time. Picking something that feels bad and then being unhappy that something that feels good can't get in through your spewing of what feels bad. It's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction. So what is the remedy? Well, for a while we've been teaching you reach for a thought that feels better. But there's a law of attraction momentum going on that won't let you find a thought that feels better when you're under the influence of something that doesn't feel good. Doesn't that make sense to you? When you try to focus on that subject, you just get more resentful and more unhappy about it. 
If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and see you in the next one.